No, you've disappeared completely. Hmm. Hello, caller. Hello, one second. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester, welcome to your Manchester Lunchtime Live. Well, a very, very good afternoon to each and every one of you joining me, Miss Belinda Scandal, for Lunchtime Live, everybody. It's a new week, everybody. Thank goodness for that. I mean, how would we cope with another week like last week, everybody? We have got a marvellous guest on for you today, everybody. We really, really have. Now, you can get involved over on Canal Street Online or, of course, any of our your Manchester platforms, Facebook, Instagram, yada, yada, yada. The only one we don't use because I don't think it's very good for visual and audio. TikTok, everybody. Other than that, though, we are here and we are bringing you some sensational chat with Harriet Thorpe, everybody. Now, she's an English actress who, tra an English actress, not even my teeth, uh, who trained at the London Central School of Speech and Drama. And she is known for amazing, amazing sitcoms, everybody. Let's just take these in for a second. The British Empire, everybody, from 1991 to 1997. Absolutely fabulous. And, of course, she is a legend of the theatre as well, everybody. Those in Manchester may have been lucky enough to see her in MAME, everybody. Oh, yes, indeed. Harriet Thorpe, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, darling, and thank God you're here because I was polishing. What else, else am I supposed to do in this effing lockdown but polish? And I was going to ask for an intervention, and thank God you've stopped me. I can put down <laughs> the spray and the dust, dear, and I can talk to you, thank God. Oh, how are you? I'm all right. How's your week panning out? Did you have anything planned until Boris um, decided to make his comments? Well... <laughs> Luckily, I do an online show called The Wonderbirds with mm -hmm. uh, Sherry Hewson, Dee Anderson and Debbie Arnold. And we do that several times a week and on a Saturday with Richard Arnold. And um, it's a uh, for mature women talking bollocks, really. And uh, it's hashtag not loose women. And uh, so I do that every week. Um, but uh, that gives me purpose. I'm teaching at lots of drama schools and online uh, counselling, not counselling, dear, what's the word? Coaching uh, for presentational skills training. And uh, yeah, so I'm doing bits and pieces, darling. But yeah, I'm, we've been through the lockdown already. We can handle this, no question. Well, we've got to really, haven't we? We haven't really got much yeah. choice. It's no, a nightmare. Darling. I mean, bless. I mean, we. I tried not to talk, talk, talk about it again with you, but Hope Mill, I've come into the same situation as exactly where we were when I was last talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're exactly thinking it, Harriet. Well, I mean, we are the same, but this is a few months. People have gone through wars. People have gone through pandemics before. We're going to handle this, and it's hell to stay at home for four weeks. But you know what? We need to crack a smile and get on with it. We can do this. It's, it, you know, we have to. There isn't a choice. It's Our information has been utter bollocks from the beginning. Nobody's told us anything. Our industry has been shut down completely and just told to retrain, I think, can't we? Um, yeah. Obviously, I should be a professional polisher, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know <laughs> it's a it's a shit show darling we know that but we don't yeah. have a choice right now and yes it's it is horrendous and there was a, there's an unwieldiness and a an endless mounting anxiety all the time probably because nobody's in control of the reins and that's the problem but thanks to you being on radio now um you know that's what matters and that's what keeps us going is being together and hearing each other and making it okay and having a laugh yeah indeed well we're not going to use our time with you today to talk about that we are going to use our time today wisely to talk about your fantastic fantastic and phenomenal career let's go right back to the beginning uh, why did you want to get into acting darling there wasn't a choice um my father was an actor my mother was a screenwriter um she wrote a really important book in the 1960s called the leather boys which was uh, called a gay classic because it was writing about working class boys who fell in love when it was still illegal to be gay and that novel of hers she then wrote the movie for it and that started um, her movie career and when i was eight years old my sister and i and my mum and dad we all moved to la 
and to Hollywood and we were playing on the back lots as we grew up. And then after a couple of uh, years being there, my parents decided to to and fro. So we'd come back to England. I started doing ballet dancing until my tits grew dear. I was at the Royal Ballet School. Uh, they would never fit into a tutu. So eventually I stopped doing that. And naturally the instinct to perform um, uh, and so I went to Central. We called it Central School of Screech and Trauma at the time, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, all, all it was amazing because, again, you realise the instinct to do anything, whether it's writing, painting, making music, acting, singing, dancing, it all comes from that same central place, which is to express and communicate whatever you're feeling. And, you know, throughout time, we've needed that as a culture to reflect the bollocks and bullshit that's going on in our society or to honor it. And we just need performers all the time. And so I don't think having a, an instinct to perform is kind of like an illness. We probably should all be in a home. Um, Got to be honest, I'm there for the clapping, uh, I have to say. It. Um, <laughs> uh, it's lovely to think we're there for art and integrity and indeed that's part of it but you could do that in your own bedroom darling which is what we're having to do now thank god for zoom um but you know we want to we want to communicate with an audience and that's what we're there for it's for each other and we have always needed it so it's kind of non-negotiably we have to have the arts no matter what our government says no matter how much we have to retrain as i said before as a professional polisher um <laughs> we have to do it we have to do it and so I was, I grew up in a world, my father was a ballet critic for Evening Standard, as I said, when he was 14, he left home during the war and joined Italia Conti in a show called Where the Rainbow Ends as a kid. And they toured all during the war. And then he went into stars in battle dress. And then he went to Rada and then he became an actor and then he sensibly stopped, but um, <laughs> became a, a, a critic. But um, so I've been in theater all my life. And, and I think, Again, it's the most inclusive, the performing arts or the arts in general is an inclusive tribe and society of people where Absolutely. you're not judged. I mean, there are souls everywhere in life. We know this. But as a group of people, in essence, we're about being together, non-judgmental, no matter what your desires, loves are. When I grew up, I didn't understand racism, homophobia, anti-Semitism. It didn't exist in my little world of the arts. It was no. only when I stepped into the real world that I realized all those things were prevalent and there and they still are today and it's unimaginable. And in the art, we don't have that. We're all together and there for each other. And that's what matters. Indeed. Now, we've got to focus on your your characters that you have brought to the yes, television. Yes. <laughs> and then, we'll, then we will sort of delve into the characters that you've brought to the theatre. But Carol Parkinson, British Empire, there's not been a oh. character like it. How do you no, go about I love it. something like that? I remember looking at the script for the first time and it said she cries all the time. This is when I was auditioning and I thought crying all the time is a bit boring, but trying not to cry is much more interesting, which again was how she developed her voice. Because sometimes you talk really, really slowly and other times you talk really, really fast because you try not to cry. So that again began to create that voice. And also I remember being in, you know, she adored Mr. Britis. She loved him so much. And obviously secretly, unbeknownst to most people, had his two twins that stayed in the drawer along with her first child um but um she you know she loved him so much and i remember being in school when my very glamorous teacher miss branton would say and now class who knows and immediately your hand would shoot up and you go <laughs> and that's how yes Mr. started because she could she loved him so much she couldn't say mr britta's fast enough so she'd say yes Mr. You know, and so that's again trying not to cry and loving Mr. Britters was how that voice sort of evolved, because it, it's an instinctive thing as as you put together a kind of mishmash of ideas and thoughts and you know they it just evolved and the writers were amazing and for seven years and we played to thirty million people um, we had a glorious time and we're still pals and two years ago we had a reunion. Um, as they rebuilt the wonderful leisure centre, sports centre, where we filmed every year at Ringwood, um, they'd remodelled it and rejuged it. So we all went there and uh, helped open it. So it was. And it was did you fantastic. get behind the reception desk? Yes, darling, I did. And and then was on the phone to Miss Chris. Yeah, it's all there. If you look it up, it's all there, dear. Yes, I was behind reception doing calls over the intercom. Say, Miss Bruce, could you please come here? <laughs> We're waiting for you at reception. So you've so, got yeah. a character there that's really, really sort of not happy with life and, you know, nervous and everything. And then you go to the yeah. other extreme, which is Fleur. From, yes, dear. From absolutely fabulous. 
Well, absolutely fabulous. Again, uh, Jen and I were at drama school together. We've been friends ever since. And I've been lucky enough to work with her a lot, which has been absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, it, it, creating that character of Fleur was someone who was really privileged. And also I decided to give her a really weak R because she really couldn't be bothered to pronounce something. And that's what happened. And Jen would write lots of stuff for me with R's in, which was really, really fabulous. So that's how that evolved, because she really couldn't be asked, really. You know, it was, again, such a complete joy, and it's in the quality of the writing that helps you create these amazing people. It, it, it's sensational stuff, and the development of it all is one thing. Mm. But to progress with it and to have such a, a massive impact on so many people's lives with these just these two characters alone, never mind the rest of your CV, must be a great feeling. <laughs> It's such an honour to have done them. And, you know, there was a moment when Pippa Hayward and I, we both had our, uh, her first child and my second child, and we were at television. They were the rehearsal rooms called the Acton Hilton, it used to be called. And we both brought our kids into work. And I was in the ladies' loo next to the rehearsal studio, um, washing out my daughter's, um, you know, baby grow. And I was thinking, life is imitating art. I'm actually bringing my daughter to work, like Carol did. She brought her kids to work and they slept in the drawers in reception. And I was, we were both doing it there at the time. It was hysterical. And you've but, you know, just, it's about it. You've Go not on. just done sitcoms. I mean, the, the list is is endless. I mean, we could we could look at uh, Casualty. We could look at The Bill, Midsummer Murders, Me, You and Him. Um, you've also done Hollyoaks as well. I mean... Well, I mean I, yeah, I've, I'm very honoured. I never play anyone... Are you there? <laughs> no. We appear to have lost Harriet there for a second, everybody. As you do, as you do, everybody. We'll get her back in just a second. Uh, well, we'll try to anyway. Um, yes, let's bring it back in just a second. Are you there, Harriet? Are you there, darling? There we are. You're there. Hello? Oh, yes, you're there. I can hear you. Well, Hello, you you just disappeared for a second there. Are you there? Are you there? There we go. You're back. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can Hello, you... Paula. Hello? 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 Hello, Hold Paula. On. <laughs> oh, God. Well, Let's try I'm that. Live, but can I you... I am. you are live, and you just can't Hello. hear me, which is always good for this. Can't hear me. No. Hello, darling. You're All there. right, then, everybody. We... I can't hear I'm you. there. I can hear. <laughs> Have you got your mic on? Yes, my mic is on. And when you listen Hello? back to this, it'd be hilarious. Uh, oh, she's gone. She's gone altogether. We're going to try and get her back, everybody. Please stay with us. Uh, we've got a load of guests lined up for you over the next few. It could only happen to me on this week, everybody. It really could only happen to me on this week. And, of course, I'm here in the studio on my own, so I've got nothing to fall back on, everybody. Um, oh, dear. I'll just give her a quick ring and see where we get to. Um, technology. <sighs> Deary me, we're going to try and get her back, everybody. In the meantime, don't forget that we have got a show for you every single uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, everybody, with the lunchtime live. We've got a load of guests for you uh, lined up. This Friday, everybody, we are looking into the world of, um, well, how best to describe it? It's the world of psychicness, everybody. And we have got an, um, a wonderful person that's... Um, been delving into the world of psychicness for a while now and uh, he's going to be joining us in a little while's time as well on friday wednesday's show we of course we've got two shows for you over on your manchester i can't believe that so many of you are still listening to this um wednesday's show of course is um an eventful one a bit like this we've got the um the lunchtime live and of course the one in the evening as well so everybody make sure you tune in to that we are desperately trying to get her back um we are we're still on air everybody um i can't even type so what we'll do is we might come back to you with another little link as soon as we get her back everybody um i think that's oh no no she's back she's back everybody she's coming back right now yeah. It's, I think it, it's, I just had to get back to my polishing. I'm sorry. I, I saw some dust and I had to rush and do some polishing. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, dear. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We're back, everybody. Yay! Oh, yay! Sorry, darling. What? I don't know what happened there. I don't. You sounded like a robot for a second and then it went off. Oh, 
maybe I am. Who knows? <laughs> maybe you are. <laughs> Who knows? So how would you go about picking these characters then, is what I was going to ask you. What well, draws yeah. you to a character? Well, the insanity, really. Either if it's a Shakespearean queen, I'm normally killing her king or doing something untoward. If Or I'm some terrible old slattern, you know, who's looking for whatever. And um, you just, <laughs> it, you find the voice, you find the character. It's all in the text, really, if it's good enough. And and I think that it's just the fun of creating people. I never really use my own voice. You know, no. I, I often play somebody I've played like this, darling, smokes, smokes about 60 a day. <laughs> You know, As I I do. About, there you go. But it's about it's about creating people. It's using your your sort of I don't know imagination and fun and thinking what can I add to this character and it's just it's just a, a thrill and fun to do. So is that what you advise to people that are looking at getting into this profession? Then you know, play with this sort of the toolbox if, as you like. Yeah, I think understand who you are and what your uniqueness has to offer. You know, I was never going to play Juliet, darling. I was always going to play the nurse. You know, it, and, and actually, I'm glad because Juliet's get older and, and yeah. character actors stick around for a bit longer. And it's just, it's fantastic. It's just not being me. It's being a whole load of other people. And, and yeah, have a good time. And don't doubt yourself and, you know, maximise your potential. And the wonderful thing we have now is we are able to use all of social media to promote and be creative. Look at the amazing comedians and things that we have on online now. You know, it's fantastic. And, you know, you say not TikTok. I've actually joined TikTok. I know the demographic is 15 to 17, but I don't see why I shouldn't be there, dear. Why shouldn't I? What the fuck? <laughs> now, what about Madame Morrible then? Now, she's been played by several million people, hasn't she? How do you go about making the part your own when so many people have played that person? Well, I was, I was lucky enough. I was only the third, I think... Um, I think Miriam did it to begin with for six months, I think, and then Susie did it after that, and then I came in after another six months. So I was in very, very early. And again, the wonderful thing about that character, and one could say that about any long-standing character, it doesn't really matter, it's knowing and understanding and having the joy of creating something that's already established and yet adding your own little spin on it. And to play Madame Morrible in Wicked was such a joy because she is the only truly wicked person in the entire show. As I said, you know, those are the only people that I play anyway. Um, and it's that arrogance and that ignorance and that ego that's such a joy to play. And my wig was so huge and the costumes were so beautiful. And she was such a, a sort of self-serving, horrendous woman, but believed in herself, you know. It's that, it's again, that magic of creating that self-justified, um, ego is it's just fun to play it never stops feeding you those characters you know it's such fun and you do seem to get called up for a lot of of the musicals um uh, yeah. recently you've just been in let me get this right what was it called sleepless what, darling sleepless in seattle i was going to call it something else and i was second guessing myself even though you've just said don't second guess. <laughs> yeah, it was it. just called sleepless and we were the first show back and it was at the yeah. troubadour theater it was um with um, absolutely fantastic cast and um, we had the best time you know and we were swabbed every day uh, which was very generous of the producers to know that we haven't got Covid and somebody said to me oh god you have to have a swab down the back of your throat or up your nose and I was like yeah I, you can have whatever one and I said uh, down the back of my throat and I said but darling listen I grew up in the 80s that's normal it was not hey. a problem <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, God, isn't it so? No, not really. Just get on with it. Um, I, you know, it's hysterical. Uh, being an ambassador for so many places as well, perhaps speak about so um, some of the places that you're ambassador for. I'm very honoured to be ambassador for the breast cancer charity, the Moonwalk Walk the Walk, um, which Victoria Wood and I started doing the walk together early on and then the first year and then the second year uh, did a documentary about it. And I kept going and um, I've had lots of my pals do the walk with me. Obviously, Jen... Saunders came and did it as well and we had a team uh Jen and Harriet's big tits <clears throat> which is a lot of fun <clears throat> excuse me and um I'm also ambassador for <clears throat> sorry choking here are you all right my polish yes dear on my polish <laughs> obviously I sprayed myself choking I need, on to, your shine. <clears throat> I need to shine dear no I'm on ambassador for acting for others which is a group of 14 different charities all under one umbrella which helps supports 
our entire industry, whether you're front of house, backstage, on stage, we're all there for each other. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm very lucky to 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 do that. I'm very honoured to do that. Do, do you feel honoured to be able to still be working and everything, um, constantly being of able course. to great roles and things like this? Of course I do. And I again, it's my job. I brought my kids up on my own doing it. It's my job. And it is, you know, as I said, the most wonderful family to be a part of and which I'm sure you experience, too, in the things that you do. It's about being together and non-judgmental and having a good time and, and having a voice. Yeah, it is a fantastic life, really, isn't it? If we got it back really to normal. Is. <laughs> we will, darling. We will get back to normal. And the fact that you're doing this now means that, you know, we can share all of this still. We don't have to be locked away. We no. have, you know, think of those people in the war who didn't hear anything for months at a time and then just got a telegram saying somebody you love, your most dearest friend was dead or a partner. Now we have an immediacy to connect to people all the time. That, you know, we've had a few months, darling, not six or seven years. We need to just, you know, we can do this, we can do it together and we're there for each other and we can reach out to each other if we're feeling bad. And now we have a society that said it's okay if you're not feeling okay. There's people yep. there to help each other and that matters so much. It's very, very true indeed. Uh, Harriet, what is next for you when we get back to normal? Um, well, obviously I'm going to the production of The Wilderness and then The Abyss. I have no idea, darling. <laughs> <laughs> it's a touring production, I understand. The Abyss goes on for some time. I don't know, darling. Broadcast. <laughs> yeah, whoever, whoever, whoever will pay me, darling, I'm there. You know, it's about, it's about being, you know, just keeping on, keeping on. That's the deal. I don't know. It will come back. We've come back before from two world wars, from pandemics, from the fire of London. We will all be back. Come on. Indeed. I like good wives words to end the, the conversation there. Now, uh, when are you coming back to Manchester? Anytime soon, I hope. Well, yes, darling, as soon as I'm invited, dear. Absolutely. I can't tell you the most joyous time last year was working at the Hope Mill doing Maine with the amazing Tracy Bennett. And, you know, the just the Hope Mill Theatre the only fringe venue in Manchester, or the first. It is so amazing. And, you know, Will and Joe, the, the boys who started this extraordinary venue, and they've just, I think the show, they're doing Rent, and it's on tonight and possibly tomorrow, and then closing down again. But yeah. they are absolute creative impresarios. Being in Manchester, doing that show, was one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done. It's amazing. Harriet Thorpe, thank you so much for your time today. And with Mame in mind, we'll play out with this. Well, everybody, don't forget to join me on Wednesday. <clears throat> Another fantastic guest. There's something going on. Your polish is getting everywhere, Harriet. It really is, because I'm choking now as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a frog in my throat. Mind you, boys and girls, it's better than a toad in your hole. I'll speak to you all again on Wednesday. Thanks very much to each and every one of you for listening in today. <laughs> we'll speak to you all soon. Take care.